Hello! So today I'm going to be talking about capacitors. Right, so first I'm going to be going over some of the history behind the capacitor from its conception in the 1700s to today, um, how capacitors work, and some of the 1500 ways you can use them in a circuit. So the universe has existed for 13.8 billion years. Earth has existed for 4.5 billion years. Homo sapiens have been around for 200,000 years, and yet in the span of months, two scientists have come up independently with the capacitor. They both invented it at the same time, pretty much. <laughs> what? Isn't that nuts? Technically, the guy that did it first was German scientist Ewald Georg von Kleist. His capacitor was known as the Kleistian jar and was completed somewhere around October 1745. Months later, a uh, Peter van Moschenbroek came out with the Leyden jar, which was named after his city in Leyden in the Dutch Republic. These two scientists might have had different ideas about how to go about it, but pretty much their main goal was to store electrical charge. The very first Leyden jar just had a nail, a glass jar, water, and human hands. The nail went through the cork, and then the cork went through the glass jar with the water, and then the hands would literally, it was connected to ground, and that would be the positive side. The charges would build up on the nail, and then the nail and the water would store this negative charge, and then negative repels negative, so the hand connected to ground would move electrons that way, and then this side would be more positive, this side would be more negative. You got stored charge. I mean, it must have been somewhat effective. Uh, after getting his first shock, Motion Broke wrote, I would not take another one of those shocks for all of France, which is a little weird. He didn't live in France. As the years went on, they started wrapping the inside and the outside of the jar with metal foil, which was a giant leap. Benjamin Franklin eventually figured out that you didn't need a big, giant, clunky jar to get the job done. You could just use a thin sheet of glass as an insulator. And that is when he came out with his Franklin Square, aka the flat capacitor. A few years later, one of my favorite scientists and one of the greatest scientists of all time tagged himself in and said, I would like a piece of this action. This physics stuff seems pretty dope. Faraday was just 13 years old when he had to drop out of school from lack of money, and then he started working at a bookbinding shop where he taught himself everything he knew about chemistry, physics, science, and he would go on to do extraordinary things. He basically handed physics the rules about electricity and magnetism. By playing around in his lab, he figured out how electromagnetic induction worked, and then he proceeded to build the first motor. The guy was also a huge chemistry lover. He discovered the laws of electrolysis, coining terms like electrode, ions, cathode, anode. The guy was known as the father of electricity. He discovered benzene. Anyway, as Faraday started working with these capacitors, he realized that the insulation layer in between these two metal plates actually affected how much charge the two metal plates could store. For example, he would measure the charge on the capacitor's plates with a Coulomb's torsion balance at a constant voltage while using air as an insulator then moved on to measure the charge while using different materials like glass, wax, or oil. And he found that yes, the material being used as an insulation layer does play a part in how much charge the capacitor can hold. For these breakthroughs, and for being so awesome and cool, he had the unit for electrical capacitance named after him, the farad. So in terms of practicality, these early capacitors really couldn't be used for much until the early 1900s. In 1909, William Dubelier invented the first Mika capacitor, which Sounds more like a hurricane or a virus, but it's just a mineral that's really good at insulating. Its purpose was for early resonance circuits in wireless hardware, which resonance circuits I'll get back to in a minute. Since the early 1900s, there has been an absolute explosion in the number of types of capacitors, but some of the main ones are paper, which is used for high voltages, glass, which is also for high voltage, good for high temperatures, metal film, which is good for timer and high frequency circuits, and then ceramic and electrolytic, which are pretty flip and popular. So instead of getting deep into each type of capacitor, which would probably take a year and a half, 
I'm just gonna get into some of the different circuits that they're used in. So I kind of got into how capacitors work in vague detail with the Leyden jar, but just to clarify, in a capacitor there are two sheets of metal separated by an insulation layer. As negative charges come in and build up on one plate, the excess of negative charges repel the negative charges on the other plate, leaving it more positive. Very simple stuff, right? So what are they used for? Well, common use number one, smoothing out DC ripple voltages. So let's say we have an AC power source and we hook it up to a bridge rectifier because our circuit relies on DC. So after this AC gets rectified, the waveform still looks pretty bumpy. With a capacitor connected to the output, when the rectified DC starts dipping down, the capacitor steps in and releases its charge. The resulting waveform is a smooth DC output. Smoother than Kenny G after a colonoscopy, where the doctor told him everything is going to be okay. Common use number two, LC circuits. L being for inductor and C being for capacitor. They're usually used for uh, picking up radio signals. So radio receivers are a video all on their own, so I'm just going to focus on how an LC circuit oscillates. So let's say that this circuit was previously charged up, either by a battery or an incoming radio signal and the capacitor is fully stored up. As it releases its charge and the current goes through the inductor, the inductor starts building up a magnetic field. As the current continues back to the capacitor, the charges start building up on the plates, but in reverse. After the inductor's magnetic field is fully collapsed and the capacitor is fully charged, the cycle repeats, but in reverse. Capacitors are also really useful when it comes to dumping out a lot of charge at once. So they're useful for things like camera flash or jump starting a car. And lastly, they can be used to either completely block DC or allow AC to pass through. This is really useful for electrical noise reduction. So for example, let's take a look at a low pass filter. If we add a low pass filter to our circuit, the capacitor shorts the higher frequency electrical noise to ground, while the lower frequency signal gets blocked by the capacitor, so it continues down the circuit. On the other hand, if we wanted to keep our higher frequency signal and get rid of our lower frequency signal, all we would need to do is have the capacitor in the circuit switch places with the resistor. This way, lower frequencies get stopped right at the input and higher frequencies pass right through. And that's pretty much it for this video. Um, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.